Welcome to Tuesdays at 7 o'clock. Um, I'm Katinka Klein. I'm a cellist in the International Contemporary Ensemble. And I'm absolutely delighted to be here with Alia Oltan, um, fellow cellist and also a composer, an improviser, a dancer, a multi interdisciplinary artist, um, a singer, a songwriter. Um, I don't know what you're not, a sculptor? As well. OMG. Um, <laughs> Um, Ali and I know each other from Ensemble Evolution in Benf, Benf Center of, uh, for the Arts. And uh, we, we connected over horsehair, pretty much, which is on the cello bow. And we both had an interest in doing crazy, crazy things with it. Um, and uh, we, I performed in a piece by her um, at Benf, which we will talk about later. Um, but our getting to know each other resulted in a premiere on March 1st by a piece that she wrote for cello and mylar called Residuum. And Alia, um, I think we're going to start off with watching it, but would you like to introduce it and say maybe just something about it? Yes, um, thank you for that awesome intro. I'm super happy to be here. Um, residuum means chemical residue, um, and this piece is looking at how Mylar, you know, is used for different situations, emergencies, for example, um, climate kind of disasters, homelessness, um, space travel, farming, photosynthesis, light, um, but it's also really toxic and awful, and it doesn't go away. Um, and the sounds it makes, the noise inherent to this material, um, and having so much of it, and then Katinka with the cello is this kind of extension of her body. Um, so really excited to be looking at this right now together and with everyone else. Residuum for Cello and Mylar. Thank <laughs> you. 
Wow, it's really amazing to see this, Aliyah. Um, you know, the experience of um, performing with Mylar and performing your piece uh, is a very specific memory and a very specific way of experiencing time um, and sound. And then to see the video is um, like a different life, like 
it's it's really cool to see it. Yeah. Um, I remember the mylar being so present, especially in the silences, because it's it's such a um, flexible um, material. It's very you know angular in its own way. Like if you fold it, it stays that way. But it's very um, yeah, it moves yeah. with every little kind of bit of air, and it makes this beautiful crackling sound. Yeah, um, it's like water. It's like shards of mirror water. It's broken mirrors as a as a river. You know, that's what I kept right. starting. Uh, it, it's so interesting. You know, you you see it and feel it in a way when you're working on it, and perf and then the performance. But then looking back. And seeing all the other shots that people took, because a lot of people filmed you on their phones too and took all these incredible pictures. And it's like, wow, Katinka looks like she's in, surrounded with this twisted, broken mirror, which is really kind of what Residuum is about now, moving into the larger pieces, you know, f having to face your waist in real time, you know, with this instrument that's like your voice in a way and so you're kind of bound mm -hmm, to this mm -hmm. thing and all your trash you know i love that <laughs> moment when like... you scream you know and and it's just so there's so much tension there because i remember i said just scream at the top of your lungs and you were saying oh i don't know if i can do that you know i don't know and then the performance came and you did it for the first time in front of me and it was really really intense because it felt so it's very playful, but also very, you know, you're being totally consumed by, you know, really, really mm -hmm. amazing moment there. In your I remember the moment. It was super natural because it, it just seemed like I needed something that was going to top something. Mm -hmm. And I know that you, we had talked about interacting with the mylar, like screaming in it and making it like resonate um, with my face. And it, I tried it a little bit. And it just somehow, um, I'm also kind of in performance, my brain goes like a hundred times faster. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think I, in hindsight, I, th I don't think I tried that for very long, but somehow it, I wanted it to be like stronger. And, um, you know, I'm the kind of person who probably like, if you asked me to scream now, I'd be like, but in a performance, it's, you know, that's different because uh, it just, you know, was right. I mean, you, you trusted me so much. This is what I love and loved at the time and love about you. You created a situation where something could happen in real time. So it wasn't, um, you know, it, it is a piece that's going to be different every time you perform it. But you created, you, you laid out a theater for me to actually live in a space with this material, just like you're saying, like this material is going to be around for how many thousands of years? Yeah, you know this? Yeah. 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 And um, we are going to have to live with it. Um, we have all had different experiences with it. Some people have had life-saving experiences with it. Some people have run marathons and, mm -hmm. and, and used it. Some people used it for growing things. Um, and I, I had a chance to actually exist with this material and interact um, with it li in life, in a live timeline. Um, and um, it, it just brought me to that scream. It's then more kind of, it's more of an embrace as opposed to like a shout. And it's more like, you know, here, here's this kind of situation we're dealing with, you know, huh, isn't that weird, you know? Um, and I'm just so excited, too, because now moving into the next stages, you know, and all the stuff you've done with water in cellos, which I'm really excited to see watch together here as well, um, and then how that relates to trash and trash islands and floating trash and floating cellos and sound in water and noise in water and filtering systems and all of that kind of stuff, so.
That's a that's a punk piece. You go crazy uh-huh. in that piece. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, we were like we were exploring it and just like and playing it like as your own hair. And then you asked me. I remember I was you came up with the craziest idea, which was to roll the hair up and um, have it secretly all in my mouth and have it come <laughs> out of my mouth pull it out and then start bowing in. I mean, how did you get that idea? <laughs> you know, it's so funny too because I I someone responded to that performance saying, "Were you inspired by that horror film where like this hair comes out of the person's mouth?" I was like, "What? That already exists? I thought I was so original." <laughs> I I just had a dream, honestly. I had a dream about it. And you mm-hmm. um Claire Chase, you know, gosh, because she's really who brought us together. She was just like, Katinka and Leah, make something happen. And and it was so cool, too, because you were you were so game for everything. Like in the videos of us experimenting, we really should show that because it's just, we were just so game for trying stuff. And we were being pretty nasty with that hair because you would have it all in your mouth. Yeah. And I would put it, not COVID sanitary work. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, I, I started, I, I brought this little contact mic that I got at a, um, some sort of annual sale that the Experimental Sound Studio in Chicago has great place. And this guy yeah. makes contact mics out of bottle cap. And it has this little stick on it. And it just, like, I just, I don't know why I feel like E.T., but it just, I just feel like a researcher. <laughs> like, I want to touch everything. And I did, like, some, some improv um, s- solo set at some point where I t- put, uh, put the uh, contact mic in my hand and I bowed my knuckles. And it slowly moved on to like the body of the cello and then the, another bow and then two bows together, kind of like fusing the body and the cello. And I remember bowing my hair at that at that yeah. um, improvisation. And then when you crackle your hair, it sounds exactly like, me- meaning like you press the hair and mm-hmm. you it crackles under your fingers or the microphone. And you can do that with your with your bow hair as well. Yeah. And so um, it just was, you know, it's so similar. <laughs> yeah, hair. the cello is so, <laughs> so human. Yeah. It's just so right. human. You know, I mean, I guess it's right. sort of a cliche, like the cello is, you know, it emulates the human voice or whatever. It looks like a body. But honestly, the hair is what is so human to me. That is what mm-hmm. is so it's bones, you know, hair, nails, mm-hmm. you know, it's very, um, right, right. Yeah. And so incredible hearing the sound of the bow through the bones of your own hand. I remember you told me that mm-hmm. and showed it to me 
And that's how we started. I look so goofy in those videos. I'm like so tired. It was early in the morning too. I have my baby face. I don't yeah. remember this. It was early. I was like, oh, let's meet at eight or nine or something. You're like, yeah. okay. And for me, 8 a.m. is just, whoa, I'm up until four. And I was there like so tired. And then you showed me the, the knuckles and that was it. We were on a total, it just, it tumbled out of control. And then Become a House was kind of, this really cool place to collect all of those ideas with the cello coming out of you, you know? It's it's mm -hmm. not even outside, it's inside and coming out of you. Yeah. Yes, I mean, it seems to be, I don't know, like a natural thing for people who have commented on, like maybe cellists? Like, I mean, no, definitely. Charlotte Mormon. I mean, yeah, it's Charlotte like the Mormon. cello for some reason... Um, fascinates cellists in every way <laughs> even though you spend every day with it yeah. is that something you've always done or was that kind of a piece that combined all those things for the first time that's something I've always done because um, fun fact I actually was in a circus as a kid um, and uh, that really shaped things for me in so many ways because costuming is as much a part of your act as the tricks you do um, and your mm -hmm. character and developing your character and becoming the show is it starts to become a part of your daily life and you're you know exercising this whole other person that you can tap into this alter ego to either get some stuff out off your chest or just be someone else um, and that's how I feel about um, mediums coming together is like they're they're all each other anyway so how how can you limit to one how can you actually limit it to one thing when the sound makes a movement the movement makes a sound makes an image makes a light shadow you know all of those things and i like this word transmedia you know it's mm -hmm. media that's constantly another you know it's constantly transforming mm -hmm. it has to happen yeah I'm saying too mm -hmm. much. Now, I'm really, <laughs> really attracted to that idea. I mean, and 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 connected to that that idea. And I have to say, Elia, as a composer, you are like I said before, you're very trusting. So you see something in somebody. You see, you 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 notice that they have an interest. You know, like you smell something, and then you go much further and you challenge them in that. And that's what you did with me. You, you could tell that, wow. you know, even cool. though we just met a little bit. And you know, you you saw that I'm into this like hair thing, and and it was, and you saw that that's possibly the tip of the iceberg of my like, <laughs> personality and interest, because that could easily be like one of the few crazy things that I do, right? Yeah. So, and because I really, you you challenged me, which is something that I love. I don't think I don't know if there's anything that I love more, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, in that piece, and also in Residuum, you know, um, the way to improvise the way to interact you're very specific with your um directions but you're also very specific with giving me agency as a performer you want you you really want the performer's um personality initiative soul what a, you know creation yeah. in the piece you leave a lot of room for that I mean, I, you know, I went to school for composition <laughs> and I, you know, I had a really hard time, you know, it was like, it was either too detailed or not detailed enough. And I was just kind of like, why are we so bogged down about this part? Like, isn't it about the process and just experimenting and finding things and, and remembering and doing it again, you know, like, and seeing it change, you know, I, I got really stuck during you know kind of the more conservatory thing of you know how and why you're communicating in a certain way um, which I do think is important but I want to talk about that and figure that out beyond a page you know it's more of like this back and forth which you know of course is really tricky right now but honestly I think we found some really beautiful ways of negotiating that like working together mm -hmm. long distance and still finding these very physical intimate things you know like what mm -hmm. <laughs> for residuum coming up like 
what a cello sounds like or what you sound like within a bubble, you know, that we're going to fill with water right. or what you right. sound like with covered in aluminum cans, you know, or what you mm-hmm. sound like dragging hundreds of plastic bottles with you, you know, and the cello, you mm-hmm. know, so these kinds of things where we can find them from afar. Um, and so I'm very excited that you've incorporated water in, in your upcoming suite. Um, um, and it, it's not like I plan to do that, but there's something about water that's psychologically very interesting. And if you think about a cello in water, it can be very shocking, but also very beautiful. And um, when I worked with water and cellos, uh, you know, um, cellos made of wood. So, in fact, you know, the way wood interacts with water, the fact that it floats, and if you try to make it sink, it comes like up really beautifully and slowly. And the fact that when really famous old instrument makers like Stradivarius would soak uh, the wood that they used um, in water for a really long time. There's this ah, relationship that's that. actually very, yeah, um, very close um, and beautiful. And um, so um, we can show a little bit of that if you want. Just I, to show, I just um, love that piece, honestly. I'd love to watch uh, it. Wow, Katinka, that piece. Oh, oh my gosh. I mean, the moment in particular, the one moment that I, I it's kind of burned in my brain, because I, I watched this earlier too, is that moment where you put the cello down and it's coming up and water is gurgling out of it, kind of like a dolphin or something, you know? It's so crazy. Mm-hmm, and, then, mm-hmm. and then the sound, and it's just so... the. 
it by putting okay we've been talking about this thing of cellos being an extension of the body right or being a symbol mm-hmm. of a body um, and these kinds of things but once it's put in water all of a sudden that gets heightened to this place where I'm, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it because then the cello as this fragile instrument you know this western classical instrument so be so careful is being really challenged you know and it's being and i remember you talked about those cellos being transitioned from a playable cello in 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 normal whatever into this water instrument into this new kind of instrument i'm really really interested in that um and someone who i think is an uh, who does this kind of, who had done this kind of work too is charlotte mormon and charlotte mormon's work with namjoon pike you know with yoko ono with john cage um and the piece sky kiss in particular where she's floating down into the hometown that she's in and is from the south you know she'd been living in new york she's flying down with the cello flying back down into her hometown you know after she had been deemed the topless cellist and kind of like totally blacklisted for doing this really provocative art making um and so i'm super interested you know in this and you mentioned it too in this weird cello phenomena where like we love to you know, part of my French fuck with this instrument. Why? Like why so intensely does this instrument call for that and work that way? You know? What are your thoughts on that? What are Yeah. I don't really know why. Honestly, I mean, I think, you know, you you talked about when the cello go, um, when when um Leah and I would try to attempt to sink the cellos which they can't, by the way. Um, and then uh, the water comes out out of the F holes um, and the sound. And then by doing that, you discover this new property, which is this amazing sound and visual quality. When the water comes out of the F holes, I'm more aware of how much air is inside. Uh-huh. See, because the air, in a way, is opposite of the water, right? Or the volume. I can I can um, kind of grasp the volume more when the water comes out. The volume of what is inside of the cello. And so um, I think in a way it is about making the physicality of music and physicality of sound closer to me. The physicality of music and physicality of sound is also the physicality of the cello for me. You know, you play a string, it vibrates the bridge and it goes, it vibrates the top and then there's a sound post and it Mm -hmm. vibrates the air inside. So there's, it's it's just... um, a very physical instrument and it has a lot of properties that apparently are still can still be discovered you know i did something with feedback where you close the f holes and you can like you know like you 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 lift your hands from the f holes and because the volume of air changes the feedback sound changes and i think um it is hard to explain <laughs> yeah, why to me exactly crazy. can you explain it well, Why I mean, the cello is so fascinating to you. The I I feel it's kind of similar to you know the electric guitar and how much people are just you know you know break this thing, light it on fire, you know, turn it inside out, make it backwards, you know, um, and uh, cello feel because I started on guitar, you know, and I taught myself how to play guitar, and I didn't start playing cello until later. And I was at a guitar center, and I, I remember trying the cello for the first time. I was 12 years old, and I just saw it, and I picked it up, and I just, you know, I made it up, you know? And this guy came up to me, and he said, wow, how, how long have you been playing? And I said, five minutes. And he said, okay. And he started to teach me how to play long tones, and then he started to teach me the G major prelude, first Bach prelude. And next thing you know, I was hooked. I was just so in awe of how vibrational this thing was, how physical it was, you know, and how that in and of itself is an intersection of all things, you know, is an intersection mm-hmm. of movement, of vib- 
vibrational stuff, the visual, you know, what you just said, where you can see everything happening. Whereas like in other instruments, it's more hidden, which is beautiful too. But with this cello, you see everything and it's just big enough that it's human size, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. it's, it's almost mm -hmm. kind of like watching yourself go through that in a way, or at least that's how I feel about mm -hmm. it. Um, and when it yeah. comes to improvising, my whole entry into you know, entrance into improvising was just how to play the cello, not like a cello period, you know, just every single way, you know, and not even what it sounds like sometimes. Maybe it's about what it sounds like, but other times it's about what it feels like or what it looks like, you know. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm Alia, really... Could I, I ask you? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so you're talking, I, you hearing, hearing you talk about this, um, in some of the movements of the residuum, residuum suite that you're writing that uh, we're going to talk about, you have me perform without a cello. So if you talk about beyond cello, that's yeah. maybe more beyond cello than <laughs> with a cello. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Because, you know, you were just mentioning how to go beyond. So to me, it's an extension that seems natural. Hmm. Um, how did you get there? Yeah, well, so I'm trying to deal with all these different kinds of trash in their own movement. So each movement is de dedicated to a different trash. Um, so one of them is menstrual products, because menstrual products are one of the top 10 things that are just polluting our earth um, and taking up a lot of space and they don't have to like there are ways we can change that um, and yet I'm really interested in engaging with just the fact that there's a lot of that material in the world right now on earth you know um, and I imagined um, this costume for Katinka and watching the tampons deteriorate, expand, transform, attached to the body, and you being completely kind of bound and covered in, in tampons and panty liners and pads and everything. And um, that was something that just, it's something that has to happen because I need to talk about that material. But it's not something I necessarily feel the need to talk about in relation to the cello because it's not necessarily a sonic phenomenon there that I find most interesting. It's the physical moment, you know, and also the pacing, hopefully, is that in that moment, there's this kind of tense silence of sorts where you're in this bubble. We should show the screenshot of the bubble, too, where you're in a bubble is in this bubble and there's a little bit of water in there and she's wearing this suit that this nude suit that has all these tampons there and it's Katinka negotiating this weird material transforming and falling apart inside of this contained space um, and then that in relation to then reconnecting with the cello and why I mean there is a lot there but one of the main things again is like I'm also interested in you, Katinka, as just um, a person, a body, an individual negotiating this trajectory of trash, different kinds of trash, you know? You, you know, you said the word negotiate space, and what I think is really beautiful, um, and maybe it's a necessary... Um, way of interacting with this material you say negotiate because you know I am negotiating with this material and I'm in a way replaying what um or reliving or, or not not reliving we're, we're creating a certain kind of situation where I'm negotiating with this material which is my life because I'm a human and on earth this material exists in very great quantities and so many you know, there's this issue, of course, that you feel, I think, very strongly about, which is environmentally, you know, environmental awareness. But your piece is not preachy in any way. It's about um, the reality of um, negotiating our space with this material. And maybe even we can find a space that's interesting. 
yeah. not saying that we should have more of this material, but it's um, it, it's a almost like a, a an alternate universe where you show a truth, a certain kind of truth. Yeah, this piece is more about kind of okay. Let's just deal with. Let's first of all, we need to just get down with the fact that there's a lot of this stuff. There's just excess, you know. There's so much excess, and how do you stay sane knowing that? Um, and how important it is to stay sane so that you can negotiate it and you can find these interesting places. So. I'm not in any way saying, you know, this is what we all need to do to save the earth. Not at all. If anything, it's just a lot of questions. <laughs> it's just a series of questions. And, you know, hey, look, I tried collecting this many glass bottles. And guess what? I exceeded the, the, how much I thought I could collect. You know, what does that mm -hmm. say about our consumerism or what, or how many aluminum cans I was able to collect versus how many plastic bottles I was able to collect? You know, what does it say about me? What does it say about the neighborhood? You know, kind of going, you know, so it's, it's really interesting too, but it's just questions. Yeah. It's not any kind of resolution there. So, Aliyah, um, that is great. And now, what I since I know what you're planning in the residuum, the final piece that you are um, writing right now, um, you you are using this idea of the glass that's rolling and the glass that's falling. Can you talk about this? Yeah. So, um, I I'm super excited about how. Um, when a jar falls, it can make, when it's on the ground, of course, you know, like in that video, one will fall over and it will make a pitch, ding, and then it will start to roll and it will, and it will make a sustained pitch and all of them are different. And I just thought, oh gosh, this needs to be taken to the next level for Katinka with this piece, Residuum. And so um, looking at this document, um, I've designed a sculpture that will actually be suspended, so it's hanging, and there's four wooden rings, and on these rings are many glass, recycled glass containers. Um, and the, the idea is that Katinka will be wearing an all full-on rubber outfit <laughs> with goggles and, and a mask and everything, um, and will be playing and moving and the bow and the elbow it's basically taking the whole position of proper cello playing and kind of poking fun at it and every time you try to move the bow a jar gets pushed off 
and it either breaks, it shatters, or it it falls and makes a pitch and and or it rolls, it falls and rolls. And so it's dealing with this kind of chance composition um, where it's just Katinka surrounded by these rings and all of this glass and what that what that then sounds like depending on how things play out. So super excited. It's a totally amazing idea. And you've figured out how to make it work too, because I, I know how serious you are about working with materials because you've we've talked and had sessions and you've tried you've almost <laughs> like and you didn't quite die or anything, but like you tried to like glue some sort of plastic and it didn't work and you changed you know, you've you've researched <laughs> two to T. You're very, very thorough with this. And um I think it's an incredibly beautiful idea and it's so interactive for the performer um very inventive and exciting um what about some of the other movements of the suite yeah the other movements so um there's uh the so nothing's in an order yet um we talked about the tampon movement um mm -hmm. and then there's a styrofoam movement which is just going to be about how awesome styrofoam sounds in the cello um, and the noise of styrofoam. Um, so that will be mm -hmm. more of a sonic experience. And then we have the aluminum movement, which is Katinka in the dark organizing cans. Um, because something I want to talk about um, is how um, homeless people and people who are just struggling to make ends meet make money organizing cans and bringing them back to stores and this kind of thing. Um, and it's something I have firsthand experience with actually um, when I was younger. So I wanted to kind of throw Katinka into that situation um, and have you organize cans, find cans. Um, and then there's a fishing line movement, which is <laughs> very interesting. Um, having all of these, um, it's actually fishing line that was found in the Connecticut River, so it's dirty. Um, <laughs> and so we're going to work on making sure it's safe. But um, pieces of fish, animals, turtles bound up, dying in this fish um, fishing line, and then weaving it through a cello and bowing the cello with lines of, of this. Very um, beautiful. And, and the, I think the pieces of fish or turtle are going to be on there. You're going to somehow resonate in or that kind of thing and it's going to be the real thing right yeah yeah i have yeah. a friend who has a fish he's fishes every single day and he's been helping me collect mm -hmm. it um and mm -hmm. yeah it's really dark to see um how much damage it does not just in terms of how much space it takes up but what it kills along the way um and mm -hmm. then another movement is plastics um and it's just a lot of plastic going on a huge gown a ball gown um, for Katinka and the cello, um, and just total, that's when I really want to go for this trash island kind of thing. And mm -hmm. then the mylar, which is what we did in Chicago, and we're just going to do it again, right. but within the larger piece. And you're, you're thinking about this, I think, um, maybe um, as, a, as a film, perhaps, right? Definitely, yeah, yeah. Um, and we're, we yeah. were thinking... Maybe you know we, we are we we're meeting regularly about this piece and workshopping it, um, and I, I think you were saying maybe like an abandoned parking lot, or uh, you know, and then we can cut to a next scene. Or if we would perform it, we would be looking probably for some sort of special venue like an abandoned parking lot where we would invite the audience, and there might be different stations for the different movements. Um, very visually appealing, I imagine. Yeah. And lighting is something we haven't really been able to research yet um, and is such a crucial part of of everything. I don't know how composers don't think about lighting. <laughs> For me, it changes right, how right. I listen so much that it's such an important part. Right. So I'm really excited. And if anyone who's been listening to this has an idea or something, or it made them think about something else, I'm always super curious about that kind of stuff, you know? So lighting, I'm super excited to start working that out too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to thank you for joining me um, tonight. And I want to thank everybody for joining us virtually. Um, and I think there's going to be a, a lobby 
a virtual lobby where we can all meet and post chat. And if you have any questions, you can uh, ask us right there. Hope to see you there. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Kitinka. Thank you.